Our next step is to install PostgreSQL database. PostgreSQL is an object relational database. You can find information about it at postgresql.org. If you go to the download section, you can find directions for different operating systems. Because there are so many different possibilities for ways to install it, I'm just going to show you how to install it on Mac, and I'll let you go ahead and try and install on your own system, whether it's Windows or Linux or whatever. And then if you come across problems, go ahead and ask me, and I'll help you through those. On Mac, if you're using Homebrew, type brew install PostgreSQL. At the very end, we're given the install location. And if you want to have the PostgreSQL server start every time when you start your computer, you can run brew services start PostgreSQL. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to start it manually when we need it and stop it manually when we want to. And I'm just going to cut and paste the command to start the server. Server started. All right. You can stop the server by just doing the same command with stop. That stopped it. Let's start it again. Oh, not stop. Let's start it again. OK. If you need any help starting or stopping a PostgreSQL server on Windows or Linux, you can go over to tableplus.io, just do a search, how to start, stop, restart PostgreSQL server, and it'll show you some things you can do. There's a command line utility called PSQL that you can use to manage your databases. You might be able to just type PSQL directly but it's different on different systems. With Homebrew, it automatically creates a dictionary called Postgres. And so I'm going to log in with that one. OK, we're in Postgres now. You can use backslash L to list all the databases. You can use backslash DU to describe the users, that is, lists all of the users. Right now, there's only the user search. I'm going to create a new database for our app. So type create database words. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. Type backslash L to list the databases. And you can see there at the bottom, we have the words database. Now we need to add a new user. So type create user words underscore user. With create db. Create db will give the words user permission to create databases, but not other permission. We want to limit what our app is able to do. So in case it's compromised, that will limit the damage that the attacker can do. Backslash du to list the users. There at the bottom, you can see the words user. And the words user is able to create databases. But unlike the Sorex user, it's not a super user. It can't create roles and some of those other things. It can only create the database. Now we want to add a password for the words user. So to do that, type alter user words underscore user with password, and then type some secure password for that user with the password surrounded by single quotes. Remember the semicolon. OK, now we want to give the words user permission to do everything on our words database. So type grant all on database words to words user, semicolon. All right, that's done.
Now our database and database user are all set up to use in our Aqueduct application. You can type backslash Q to quit. See you in the next lesson. We'll start getting our Aqueduct app all ready to use our new database.